Hi, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I had a visitor from Canada come down for some van modifications. I'm in it, gonna introduce you to her and she's gonna give us a tour of her amazing Ford Transit build. Hi, I'm Dawn Gibbons from Alberta, Canada, and I am the author of the Daphne the Blind Dog series of children's books. The purpose of going out in a van is to share the children's books across Canada and I really needed a lot of storage, so I got the biggest van I could get. I got a high roof extended Ford Transit 250. The build was professionally done based on my own design, and the design really considered my main priorities. The first one being the need to store all the things for sharing the children's books because that's the reason for the van in the first place. The second thing is to accommodate the needs of a blind dog. and their safety in particular. The next thing is the books aren't supporting my lifestyle yet, so I have a full-time job and I need to be able to also work in the van and the last priority is living comfortably. I've been on the road for a couple of months now and I really wanted to get a little more organized with the storage for all the things that I need for sharing the children's books and so I came down to visit with Johnny and she's been doing miraculous work in mainly in the garage but also fine-tuning some things inside the home. Why don't you come on in and I'll show you around. I designed a set of stairs so that the small dog could get up to the bed area on their own otherwise they are very limited in the amount of space that they have access to. I did try out this design with Daphne before I had the builder build them and I made it basically with cardboard boxes at home just to make sure that Daphne could learn the stairs and it would be worth the investment and she learned them really quickly so I was confident about the design. So each drawer has storage. The bottom one isn't actually a drawer, it lifts up and stores my electronics, my two laptops and all the accessories that go with them. The next drawer stores all my shoes and there's an adjustable shelf inside that cabinet so that I have boots underneath and I can switch those around when the season permits or when the season requires. Um, and then I have a toilet drawer with my sea head composting toilet. I love that and there's room in there for all of the cleaning products etc toilet paper etc I have a wide drawer that allows me to store my induction cooktop I like having a portable cooktop and I can put it on this fold down countertop and I have an outlet here to plug that in also I have an outlet near the sliding door so that if I want to cook outside I can put a small table right there. I can even put an ex put the extension cord on it and cook at a picnic table a little ways away. Inside this cabinet you'll see that I have some storage for some key items. This is my coffee station mainly. <laughs> I have a nice big sink. The reason being I have to bathe my dog on a regular basis. So this is a really good size for bathing a small dog. I do have running hot water for that purpose and in order to do dishes and not use the full size of the sink I put a bin in here and that's really handy to minimize the water usage but also rather than every time I do dishes the water going into the gray tank if it's convenient and suitable, I can dump this out directly. Under the sink, I have a five gallon gray tank. It is white, semi clear, so that I can see the level of water in it. And also it is rectangular in shape, so it fits really nicely in the cabinet. Learn from me, okay, and my mistakes. I put one of those absorbent dish mats under the gray tank and across the bottom of the cabinet because sometimes water 
overflows. Sometimes water drips from the hose when you've taken the tank out, that type of thing. So I recommend a dish mat in the bottom of the cabinet. Above the sink, I have put some baskets on the wall. I've just hung them with some hooks and they store some necessary things, uh, mostly for the dogs. So I've got dog toys, dog treats. Um, I've demanded some space for my own fruit. And here I've got some hooks and I can hang these here. This way I can hang anything that's wet and it will just drip over the sink. Here I have my Norcold refrigerator. I don't know what the capacity is, but it's a nice size for me. And it's got a small freezer, small, but it seems to defrost on its own, which is good. This particular fridge is shaped on the back to allow for it to fit on the curve of the van wall. So it's really nice that I can get this kind of capacity with that curved wall and have it raised off the floor. By raising it off the floor, I've got room underneath for a dog bed. And the original build had just an opening and I wanted to close that in for the dog's safety. I got a piece of a dog crate and cut it to size and Johnny has framed it up for me and put it on hinges and put a clasp on it. So the dog can stay safe in here, whether I'm outside of the van or I'm driving and they're sleeping, I don't wanna disturb them, that sort of thing. Uh, they can sleep in here at night, whatever, and feel nice and cozy. Above the fridge, I've got a nice cabinet to store whatever I choose. At this end of the bed, I have a net over here so that the blind dog who doesn't know the difference between stepping off the top of the stairs and stepping off the edge of the bed where there's a three foot drop, this protects them and directs them to the stairs. I have it on a table hinge, I guess you call it, and it folds down nicely so that I myself can get in and out of bed easily and put it back up very quickly. I designed and installed this myself, but Johnny helped me by putting it on a platform to raise it up a few inches. And that just adds another level of safety so that the dog can't actually reach to climb over. I have a double size mattress and that was predetermined determined by the need for storage underneath and as well the orientation of the bed being from front to back is because of the need for storage underneath and I did choose a double size mattress I could have gone with a queen but I wanted to leave space for some storage bins on the side the storage bins have a nice flat surface and I use those as a shelf to put things on and I can, so for example, I can set my laptop up there if I want to watch something while I'm sitting up on the bed. I can put my music book on the stand on those bins and practice my ukulele, that type of thing. I have some cushions on the bed that are not just for decoration, they're actually storing blankets and towels. On the other end of the bed, I have created what appears to be a headboard and it's just made with tension rods and there are some plastic um, plastic plates I guess with a kind of ledge curved ledge on the bottom to help those rods stay in place that's keeping the dog safe from going over into a kind of a deep cavity between the edge of the bed and the back doors. I have some clothing storage above the bed and I've made some bins to sort and organize my clothes in there, which is working out very nicely. Above the bed, I have a marine hatch and it allows me to stand on the bed, reach around the open hatch and clean off 
the solar panel. I have a 300 watt solar panel up there that I will occasionally need to clean off. So that's very convenient. That means I don't have to mount or store a ladder to get up there. I have bunk windows on both sides. I have a fan in the corner. I have reading lights on all the other corners. I have a heater that I can control from the bed and the heat vent comes out at the bottom of the garage entrance from inside. From inside the van, I can access my laundry basket, my shower kit, and anything else that I might need on a regular basis from right in here. This is where I do my full-time work. I have my swivel lagoon table at just the right height for me with a rubber mat so that nothing moves around on it. I have my laptop with a monitor extension and my Wi-Fi modem from Maple Wi-Fi, which is a service in Canada that also allows for free roaming here in the US bonus and it is truly unlimited. It does not slow down at a certain interval of data usage. I also have this curtain that goes around the swivel seats. This allows the seating in the front to become part of the living space. That means I didn't have to allow space for built-in seating. The curtain is a blackout curtain that I made and I put it on a flexible curtain track and I didn't want the curtain track to be visible from the outside so I hung just with pins into the ceiling a piece of ribbon that just blocks that from view. And it closes up really nice and gives us lots of privacy and blocks the light. So I have displayed on the wall here the covers of both of my books. Daphne the Blind Dog Gets Adopted was published in December of 2019 and I had lots of plans for the spring to share the books at different markets and events. And the second book was published seven months later in July of 2020. And if you think about the pandemic and the timing of the publication of the books, not a good mix. So that's really why we have chosen to do a book tour now. We are making up for lost time from the pandemic. And I know that lots of people in lots of different businesses were impacted in a similar way. You'll see that I have a lot of stuff in my garage. And like I said, this is why the bed is situated the way it is so that I can accommodate all of the needs for the market and for my personal needs. So Johnny has built some great shelving for me because, and walls, because previously I had everything piled on top of one another. And when I had a market, I had to take a bunch of stuff out in order to access what I needed and put it back in while I'm at the market, move it around in and out and in and out of things that I don't even need today. So now I will be easily be able to take out my canopy and the wagon to haul some bins, bins of books are back there. Everything can come out without moving something else that I don't need. And she's created a channel here. I've got a table that slid, has been slid in here. I've got weights for the corners of the canopy. It's fantastic. And alongside, I've got easy access to my bicycle. This was a problem before, and I really have not been able to take my dog out for a bike ride at all yet. So now that it's easy to take it in and out without moving all kinds of other things, we're gonna be able to enjoy that experience now. I also have some things stored on the outside of the garage. Being a Canadian, I anticipate needing a snow brush. And this is a telescopic snow brush that will allow me to get to the top of the windshield on the front of the tall van. I've got some working clothes in this bag that I picked up at a thrift store. So gloves and safety glasses, coveralls, that type of thing. I've got my extension cord hanging there. Over here, I have my water hose 
it is a collapsible hose that squishes up really nicely in this actually this is a lunch bag the lunch bag has a separate compartment in the bottom for some gadgets that make water filling easy for example this goes on the end of the hose and into the water tank and makes it easy to fill the tank and this bag again it was a thrift store buy and I have an air compressor here and Johnny is installing a 12 volt outlet here so that I can so I can fill up the tires on the bicycle from the back right here where the bicycle is and where the air compressor is all right, Don, thank you for doing the tour. Thank you for coming down all the way from Canada to have me be a part of, of your travels and your business. Um, go ahead and tell us, tell our subscribers how people can follow you and your website. All of the information for everything that we're doing is at DaphneTheBlindDog.com. To follow us on YouTube, just look for Daphne the Blind Dog and we are building a channel showing all of the adventures that we're having across Canada and even this journey through the United States. All right, tell us what an average day of van life is for you. Well, because I'm working on the road, the main thing is to find a place to set up and work during the day where the dog can also have access to you know the grass and things like that so I tend to park at a truck stop or a rest area and or Walmart Home Depot those types of places when I've got the van closed up it doesn't matter where I am for sleeping then during the day I find a park area so that I can put the playpen out for the dog and they can have their time in the grass and uh, some outdoor fresh air while I'm sitting at the computer just doing my job and then at the end of my work day maybe we go for a bike ride or explore the area we're in before we find our next place to park a lot of times in the evening depending on where we are in the country we are needing to travel a little bit we will put a couple of hours into travel and then park in a, an entirely new location. It's quite an adventure. Thanks for following along. We'll see you on the next video. That I can, con I can have a,